So I hadn't had the chance to put out uh, any information yet on my thoughts of the Void Gauntlet. Now the Void Gauntlet, in theory, looked like a pretty good weapon. Obviously, from looking at the, the you know the, the character drawings that they did for it, you know it really gives you that, you know, that Psylocke from old school X Men sort of feeling. And as soon as you see it, you're like, oh, this is awesome. Look, just look at his ability. You're just like, this shit is awesome. It's going to be amazing. This shit is complete ass. I'm going to explain why. I'm gonna go over, we're going to go over some of the abilities. Don't even worry about... I didn't put any points in because there was really no point in even testing it. When you actually just look at the abilities and just think critically. So the only real ability that deals damage in this entire kit that's useful is going to be the Void Blade. Now the Void Blade is timed. It lasts 15 seconds and it's on a 24, 25 second cooldown. So the only way that you're actually able to hit somebody with the Void Blade is you can literally gotta, gotta run up to them and then just start swinging. It's literally a left click uh, spam. For all you people that complain about Great Axe, this is literally the exact same thing. This is the brainlet left click that a lot of you people complain about. But this is where your primarily, the vast majority of your damage is gonna come from. The light attacks are just shit. Like, they're, they're, it's so small, it's real easy to dodge, even the heavy attacks. And the animation is kind of slow. It doesn't feel as clean as many of the other heavy attacks. And again, you're not, you know, I'm not worried about taking light attack, 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 light attack damage from anybody doing this. It's real easy to just kind of sidestep, especially if you're wearing medium. If you're in light armor, you're never going to take damage from the light attacks from this thing. The second thing is that most people you're going to see take is going to be the AoE on the ground, which is called Oblivion. Oblivion puts an AoE in the ground, kind of like uh, Ice Storm. The only difference between Ice Storm and Oblivion is that most of these abilities are defensive abilities or they're secondary abilities like for like your back bar. If you're wearing, you know, a, um, if let's say you're rocking a life staff on your front bar, you're typically a healer. This feels more like a secondary weapon for a healer than an offensive weapon for like a DPS. You might even be able to get some efficiency out of it if you're let's like, say like a tank. But if you're going pure DPS, especially if you're going, I'm going to be like a mage melee build, it's not going to happen. At least not with this. The reason being is because it's super easy to counter. Oblivion, you drop Oblivion on the ground, and you know what a smart player does? They just walk away. <laughs> they just walk away like, yeah, I'm going to wait that out, right? The moment you see that shit on the ground, I'm just going to back up, and I'm not going to take any damage from it. You're going to be an idiot to sit in the circle. The secondary thing... Is when you're looking at the abilities, and this is probably another ability you're going to see a lot of people take, which is Baleful Tether. The problem with Baleful Tether is this fire a projectile that tethers you to the enemy, weakening it and empowering it. So this is where you're going to get, uh, you know, a lot of your, uh, a lot of your burst damage is going to come from, you know, weakening your opponent, and then it gives you empower. It's got a 15 meter range, and it's a 10 second cooldown, and there's a couple of different things. This is Successful hits against tether targets reduce other void gauntlet cooldowns. Now, while that might sound good, the abilities in void gauntlet are expensive. As you can see, 25 mana, 20 mana, 25 mana, 30 mana, 20, 20 mana, and 25 mana. So if you have another, uh, if you have another mage gauntlet, a, a mage weapon on your front bar, and you're anything less than like 70%, you're going to be gassed before you even enter the fight. So that presents its own issue. So the cooldown is kind of useless because you're going to run out of gas really quickly. And while you do get more man mana regeneration, the, the easiest thing to do when you're fighting against a void gauntlet is to literally walk away and to kite the person. Because the vast majority of their damage is going to come from the blade. And the blade has a timer. So you know what you do? You just basically uh, play a little avoidance for a little bit of time. Toss a CC out. Once the blade goes down, just go right in and burst. Because his entire kit on the back bar, where his damage is going to be, is going to be on cooldown. So you just walk away. As soon as the person basically, uh, as soon as the person basically drops their, their ability, just literally dodge out of it. Because there's no slow. There's no slow that keeps you in the little circle, right? So it just makes it real easy, especially if you're wearing medium armor or light armor. All you're going to do is just going to dodge right out of it and then wait for that person to engage you. And while that happens, that person is burning the, their duration on their on their blade, which is where most of their burst is going to come from. 
the other problem is is with the tether right so the tether is bound to my to my r so the tether is what gives you additional damage this is going to give you empower it's going to cause weakness in your opponent the problem with the tether is that it's a ranged ability so the moment you see especially if you're like i, I, I could say unless you're toe-to-toe -to -toe with the person you're more than likely going to get it off but if you're doing it from range it's about 15 meters is probably about where that tree is or so let's see so 15 meters about here if you see someone doing the animation just literally sidestep you avoid the tether because you have to hit as it says on the ability right successful hits meaning you have the ability to miss and the way that you can miss is just literally just sidestep and you just literally avoided a huge portion of they're what's going to give you, you know, you know a debuff and it's going to buff them. They just wasted 25 mana, which is a lot. And it has a huge long cooldown. And of course, they're going to lose out on the mana, mana regeneration. So if you just pay attention to some of the abilities, like I said, you, you, as soon as you see this, I'm just literally going to walk right out of it. Which means the only form of DPS is going to be your blade. Without landing your R, you're completely neutered. Now, some of the other abilities are a little bit better, which is why it kind of makes me wonder what people are going to take. Um, in terms of Orb of Decay, as a DPS, is useless. It's another ability that's ranged that you can just sidestep and get out of the way. The other problem is that if you toss it out, it goes in a straight line, and then it literally comes straight back. So if you move and you have to kite, because what idiot is going to stand still and wait for the orb to come back? That's, not ju that's just not realistically going to happen in a situation where you're fighting a competent opponent. So that person is going to move, they're going to strafe back and forth, they're going to force you to move from where you are. Now the only good thing is that you can explode, you can explode the uh, the orb, which will deal a little bit of a slow, but still, as soon as you see the animation, again, as soon as you see the animation, you can just sidestep it and get out of the way and avoid some of the damage. Now, some of the other abilities that are a little bit more useful is going to be the stun, which is petrifying scream. But again. If the person and like if you see someone just randomly running up to you because there's a passive right there's a passive here where I forget where it is where when you when you cast an ability um, in front of someone it gives you empower. Let's see if I can find it. I forget where it is, but I know there's a passive in here where when you're running up to somebody it'll give you empower. So if you cast your abilities uh, within five meters of somebody. It'll give you. It'll give you a little bit of. Um, where is it? It'll give you some cooldown back. Not cooldown. Um, it'll give you a little bit of empower. I forget where it is. Maybe it's this one. Five percent cooldown reduction on Billy. No. Anyway, anyway, I know. I know it's somewhere in here. I know it's somewhere. I forget where it is in the kit. So if I see some idiot running up to me, he's more than likely gonna be a void gauntlet person. So. As soon as I see him running up to me, more than likely, I know this individual is probably running uh, petrified. And you know what you do? You're going to end up taking the damage. But once that happens, you have the ability to finish kiting the person around. Especially if you're wearing medium or light armor. More than likely, if you're wearing medium, you'll have a much easier time. The other problem is, is that when you're playing this kit, this kit is heavily susceptible to being stunned. So, if you stun the person... It gives you the opportunity to kite them back. Because the whole point, the, the best of, uh, the best thing that you can do when fighting against a void is the void gauntlet is literally avoidance. Because most of the damage is going to come from the blade. And if, as long as you can out-sustain the blade and kind of pepper in a little bit of damage from from range, especially because it doesn't have that much of it doesn't have that much range. It's very similar to the hatchet. The hatchet you literally have to be up close, and there are other <clears throat> There are other weapons that have a little bit more range, like, for example, if you're running the spear, or if you're running the two-handed axe, or if you're running uh, the mallet, uh, the hammer, where the hammer has a lot of CC in it. So as long as you can reserve more of your stuns and staggers and slows when the person is on their void gauntlet bar, you can literally leave them, in essence, neutered, uh, because they're not going to be dealing a lot of damage. It seems like it's, it's a bit more oriented like i said it feels like it's a bit more oriented for you being attacked like you're a you're a backline healer and so it gives you some of these tools that are designed for you being chased down and that's typically where the void gauntlet excels so if you're using it more on the aggressive it's very easily 
uh, is very easily countered by just simply stunning and keep staying mobile and not being overly aggressive and fighting the person, especially if the person drops, you know, their circle on the ground. You don't want to obviously sit there like an idiot taking taking the damage, especially if the person pulls out their void their their, their blade. You're gonna to want to play a little bit back, try to burn as much time as you can, so that you burn off the timer on the void gauntlet, so that the amount of damage that they can deal with it basically uh, gets neutered. And that's where a lot of the uh, that's where a lot of the counterplay is gonna come in with void gauntlet. Like I said, pretty decent for a defensive. For a decent defensive gauntlet, I was hoping it was going to be a little bit more, but the biggest thing that's going to happen with Void Gauntlet, especially if, especially if you use a lot of your abilities, you're going to get gassed. You're going to spend in the area of what 25, just on this build, 25, uh, 25. That's 50, 75. Just in popping these three abilities, you're going to spend 75 of your mana just on those abilities, and the Void Gauntlet doesn't necessarily have the best of sustain. If you have any sort of mobility, let's say like you're, if you're a mage build and you're uh, running rapier and let's say you're running rapier and uh, fire staff, you're easily going to move out of range of the tether. Even I think even if you're just running uh, ice gauntlet and and rapier, you're still going to have enough mobility from fliche because fliche is 10 meters. If you're, for example, using you got great axe and you have charge. More than likely, you're going to be able to get out of the range of the tether if you just uh, utilize the charge and just basically move out of range of the tether so that you're not being debuffed and the person, of course, is not being buffed as well. There's quite a few options, especially if you're running, let's say, bow, bow, high mobility will be able to create enough distance. Uh, sword and shield, you can literally just pop your stun, right? You hit him with a shield bash. Shield bash is what, three seconds? Yeah, fully... Uh, fully specked out shield bash is going to be three seconds so you'd stun the person and just <laughs> just literally move out of move out of range and you'll have enough you'll you'll waste a fair amount of seconds you might be able to burn in the area of five six or maybe even seven seconds which is a lot which is a lot of time for the void gauntlet for the blade because the blade only lasts 15 seconds so the longer that you can kind of burn out the timer you're basically uh, avoiding a lot of damage and then the person gets forced to flipping over back to whatever there is that they're running on their front bar anyway that was basically my two cents i was hoping it was going to be a little bit better it feels much more like a highly defensive uh back bar but for most builds outside of i would say like a healer spec i really don't see it being all that useful maybe on an ice gauntlet because an ice gauntlet is typically going to be uh, fairly medium range depending upon how you play but in my excuse me in my opinion you're better off with the rapier especially with all the buffs that the rapier got with this patch rapier has better mobility that then better mobility due to fliche it's got a counter stun um you you do have a stun on you do have a stun on the void gauntlet but you've got way more options for damage over time a pseudo execute You've got burst here. You've got mobility. You've got mobility. So you have better options if you're picking. Let's say, like, if you're even using uh, fire staff. Fire staff, you're typically going to want more mobility if, unless you're wearing light armor. But then what are you going to pair it with? You're more than likely either going to pair with an ice gauntlet or you're going to pair it with a rapier just because you have more options in terms of damage and survivability than you do with the with the gauntlet because the gauntlet requires you to sit there and actually tank damage i really don't i really don't recommend it outside of you being basically a healer i've seen a lot of other videos where they talk about and most of the time where i see people like doing 1v1s and duels on the ptr the person is trying to sit there and tank out their damage and they literally sit inside they sit inside the person's aoe and it's like a smart player and you're just gonna move out of the aoe that's all that's gonna happen you're gonna move right at the AOE. You're gonna make that AOE completely, completely pointless. And it's because it doesn't have a slow like you have on Ice Storm. Ice Storm has a nice slow to it. It's got 25% slow, and then you can pair it with Ice Shower. So that's what makes it a little bit more useful. And the damage comes in fair, uh, you know, fairly fast. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. That was basically my two cents on the Void Gauntlet. Seems like a very decent. Um, defensive back bar for for a healer maybe you might even be able to make use of it on a tank but for a dps 
I really don't see it all that useful. You know, it's very easily countered by a player who, who knows what he's doing and knows the limitations of the Void Gauntlet. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Leave your opinion down below. And I'll check you next time. Thanks for watching. Take care. God bless.